On the night of June 24, 1894, a celebration was thrown in Lyon, France in honor of their president. Weaving through the streets, President Sadi Carnot watched from his carriage as his constituents celebrated him, his legacy, and the success of the Third Republic. What the president didn't know was that within that crowd was a man who had just walked 27 kilometers from Vienne on an hour of sleep fueled by revenge with the sole intent to murder him. This is the story of that man, a movement, two bombers, and three executions. Let's begin with the man. Sante Geronimo Casario was born on December 8, 1873, in the small village of Mota Visconti in northern Italy. His middle name, Geronimo, came from the famous Apache leader who had become a global symbol for resisting power. Casario's family, like much of the late 19th century working class, were poor. His father passed away, and shortly after, Casario left his family at the age of 10 to pursue work as a baker's apprentice in the nearby city of Milan. After settling in, Casario met and befriended a man named Pietro Gori. Gori was an influential Italian anarchist, lawyer, and poet at the time. He ran an illegal anarchist newspaper called Friend of the People and helped translate the Communist Manifesto into Italian. Gori took the young Casario under his wing, and the young boy was quick to adopt his new friend's principles. In writing about Casario, Pietro recalled the boy as being shy, kind, and hardworking. Casario soon began handing out anarchist pamphlets, rented a flat, and would even often house his homeless comrades. When considering Casario's upbringing, it's no wonder why the anarchist movement resonated with him at such a young age. The anarchist movement in Europe grew during the early 1800s, as thinkers of the Enlightenment reasoned that people could think for themselves, making governments, and especially monarchies, less necessary than once thought. Later, Karl Marx and Frederick Engels produced critiques of capitalism that quickly spread through Europe thanks to the development of railroads and modern travel. Newfound Marxists found common ground with anarchists, as both groups distrusted those in power. As a result, the anarchist movement began heavily focusing on working class issues. Working conditions in the late 19th century were extremely harsh. At his trial, Sante Casario remarked on one of the reasons he eventually left Italy. Quote, I left my native land because I was often brought to tears upon seeing little girls of 8 or 10 forced to work 15 hours a day for a miserable wage of 20 centimes. End quote. Casario's father died of pellagra, a common disease most prevalent in malnourished working-class people. Sante Casario had been made acutely aware of his low social ranking, and saw the only path to liberation was to destroy the system that held him and his comrades down. Casario continued working as a baker in Milan into early adulthood, splitting his meager earnings between bread and printing anarchist pamphlets. In 1892, he was arrested for the latter and spent eight months in prison. Shortly after his release, he was called to serve in the military. For Casario, serving in the military contradicted his anarchist values. Refusing to enlist, however, would mean more prison time. Instead, Casario opted to flee his home country, heading first to Switzerland, then to Lyon, France. In Lyon, he connected with French anarchists before moving around the country first to Vienna, then finally setting down to the small town of Set, where he once again took up a job as a baker. When Casario moved to France in 1892, the country was approaching the 100-year anniversary of the French Revolution, and had been operating under the Third Republic government for the past 20. Marie-Francois Sadi Carnot was approaching his fifth year in office as president, and he was very popular. Carnot took office in 1887, replacing an administration marred by corruption. He came from a well-known and respected family, and served as Minister of Public Works and Minister of Finance before finally taking office. While France's government continued to struggle with corruption and scandal under his leadership, Carnot himself remained more or less unscathed. Among France's population, however, things were heating up. 
anti-Semitism was on the rise, socialism was growing in popularity, and, most consequently for Carnot, people in the anarchist movement were about to make themselves heard. Since the establishment of the Third Republic in the 1870s, France's anarchy movement remained more or less dormant for the past 20 years. In the 1880s, anarchists in Switzerland began theorizing the idea of propaganda of the deed. This involved anarchists taking bold, individual action in retaliation to power, in hopes that such actions would inspire more individuals to carry out their own actions, thus setting off a sort of chain reaction. While in concept, propaganda of the deed did not directly encourage violent acts, it was well understood that such acts would generate the most attention. On December 9, 1893, August Vellante threw a homemade bomb into the French Chamber of Deputies. In the time of the Third Republic, the Chamber of Deputies served as the meeting place for the Legislative Assembly of the French Parliament. The weak device didn't kill anyone, but over a dozen people were injured. Vellant was promptly arrested and sentenced to death. His final words were, quote, Courage, cousins, long live anarchy. End quote. After the attack, the French government passed laws restricting freedom of press to prohibit publishing anarchist documents or criticisms of the government. However, the execution of Vellant only spurred inspiration for what would become the second attack. One week after Vellant's execution, Amélie Henri set off a bomb at Café Terminus, a popular café frequented by the aristocratic French citizens, who Henri considered to be the bourgeois. Henri was successful in killing one person in his attack and injuring 20. Like his comrade, whom he sought vengeance for, Amélie Henri was sentenced to the guillotine for his crime and was executed on May 21, 1894. Both executions were approved by President Carnot and both were noticed by Sante Casario. On June 22, 1894, one month after Amélie Henri's execution, Casario learned that President Sadi Carnot would be giving a speech in Lyon in two days. In that moment, Sante Geronimo Casario decided it would be his turn to avenge his comrades. The next morning, 35 hours before the assassination, Casario told his boss that he was quitting his job at the bakery. An hour and a half later, he bought a dagger from a local gun dealer. At 3 p.m., Casario arrived at the train station and took two trains to arrive in Montpellier, where he visited a friend while waiting for the next train at 11.23 p.m. Here, he managed to sleep for about an hour, and when he arrived in Avignon, he had an issue. There was a train that went directly to Lyon, but it was out of Casario's price range. Instead, he settled on a ticket to Vienne, where he arrived around 9.30 in the morning. Here, he caught up with a few friends, got a haircut from another friend for free, and ripped a page from Lyon's newspaper, which detailed the President's Day event, and wrapped it around his dagger. At 1.30 p.m., it was raining. Sante Casario was out of money, running on an hour of sleep, and still 27 kilometers from Lyon. Having no other option, he walked the rest of the way. Sure enough, President Carnot was in Lyon that day to announce that he would not be seeking re-election, despite being at the zenith of his popularity. In his honor, a celebration was held in the city that evening. The streets were adorned with French flags, and the nationalistic pride undoubtedly added fuel to Casario's intention when he arrived in the city. Casario waded through the parade of people until he eventually located a road where the president's carriage would soon be passing through. At 9.15 p.m., Casario spotted the president's carriage coming down the street. At the right moment, Casario sprang forward, jumped on the footboard, and stabbed President Carnot. Since Casario's dagger was wrapped in paper, many people thought he was simply making a plea. Casario could have used this as an opportunity to disappear into the crowd, but instead he ran in front of the coach and shouted, Long live anarchy, long live the revolution. 
echoing the words of his executed comrade Vinland. Casario was seized, and the wounded President Carnot was rushed to the Palace of Prefecture, where he died shortly after midnight. At his trial, Casario made no attempt in apologizing for his actions, or to plead insanity. On the contrary, the 20-year-old anarchist was calm and even witty at times. At one point, the judge said, You had no right to kill the president. There's a natural law which prevents killing. To which Casario calmly retorted, But heads of government are used to killing. Casario also refused a deal to give up the names of fellow anarchists, saying Casario is a baker, never an informer. Like Vaillant and Henri, Sante Casario was sentenced to death by the guillotine and was executed on the morning of August 14th, 1894. Despite Casario making it clear his intentions were in no way nationalistic, several French citizens called for actions to be taken against Italy, with some even demanding warfare to avenge their beloved president. No such actions were ever taken, but it did take some time for tensions between the two nations to subside. President Carnot was succeeded by Jean Casimir Perrier, who served the shortest presidency in French history at only six months. After his execution, Sante Geronimo Casario's friend Pietro Gori wrote a ballad dedicated to his comrade. The words are as follow. Workers, these words are for you, of this sorrowful song of mine, which celebrates a bold and strong young man who for love of you challenged death. It shined in your pupils, Casario, the spark of the human peak, and to the working and crying people you dedicated all your love and hope, and you rose in painful act to avenge a stranger's suffering, and you struggled, you so good and mild, to shake those tired and disheartened souls, the powerful shuddered at this proud act, and new treacherous plans were hatched in their minds. But the people to whom you gave yourself entirely did not understand you, and yet you didn't yield. And your twenty-odd years one feral morning, you offered to the world from the guillotine, while your compassionate soul to the cowardly world cried out, Viva la Arnichia! Sleep, Casario, in the cold soil, where you'll hear the rumble of the final war. <laughs> 